Barkley's got an opening. She kicks at the corner. Lineager for the win. Three pointer. And the clock runs out. The clock runs Clinton out wins. Hey, Joey. Dave, what's up? This is Coach Muscle from Arkansas Razorbacks. Man, I know you guys are huge North Central Arkansas basketball fans. 34 to 40, right here at the Coliseum. As the fans are storming the court, you expect that when it's a rivalry game. I remember that for sure, and it was in the fifth set, and it was tight. Like, we were back and forth with Flippin, um, as we always do. And it is put away! He is going to take it to the house! Touchdown, Yelda! Because we had crowd noise again. So uh, we had to turn everything back up. So look at Alexander. Alexander hits the winning shot! And congratulations to the Flippin' Bobcats! Hey everyone, this is the Loose Cannon, David McBee, and I'm joined by, this year, it's not just me, I got a guest host, actually got guest host, let me rephrase that, co-host, the one and only Joey, the dealmaker, Shaw, Joey, glad to have you here for season two. Yeah, glad to be here, thanks Dave. And we got a very special guest, first episode, we're like, we got to bring in the guys that's going to bring in the big ratings, uh, we got... Cotter basketball coach Jackson Rains joining us for about 10, 15 minutes. Uh, coach Rains, appreciate you taking your time. I know you were going to had a date out on the golf course, so appreciate you <laughs> jumping over and uh, taking a few minutes with us. Yeah, man, I appreciate you having me on. It's always good to talk to you. Uh, yeah, the, a little bit too cold, a little bit rainy, so I decided to to let the golf happen maybe over the weekend or something, so. Yeah, I saw Works a couple lightning strikes on the way here, and I was like, yeah, probably. I don't think Coach Rains is going to be out on the golf course <laughs> this morning, so. No, sadly not. Well, we just got a, a few questions, and, uh, you know, it's been a privilege for us covering you. Uh, you know, we've been covering Cotter really from the very beginning of the Twin Lakes Sports Network. Uh, that was our first games that we covered was the Cotter Warriors. So, you know, especially over the last four years in this group that's getting ready to graduate, we got a chance to really follow them throughout. But, Kind of share with us, uh, you know, how long have you uh, been a basketball coach? Well, this will be my sixth year. I uh, had two years at West Memphis at junior high there um, and then came to Cotter. So this will be my fourth year here at Cotter. Uh, yeah, um, you know, it's always great to hear y'all uh, call our games. Like when we have an exciting game afterward and we've won, I've still got my adrenaline pumping. So when I get home, I get on my phone and sit in my recliner and listen to y'all call the game afterward and it's I mean it's always exciting to hear that man it's pretty awesome yeah we enjoy it very much uh we look forward to next season to cover you next year but uh coach uh, what other teams do you coach well I do I'm doing track right now um we don't have a lot come out for track we got most of the most of everyone's playing either baseball or softball so we got a few uh like Morgan Zick she's uh She's very athletic. She can do the hurdles and the hundred and the high jump. Um, and then Brooks Cheek, he's come out. And um, I guess the guy just lifts like six hours a day. So he he threw it. He threw shot at uh, Harrison last night. And he got, uh, he got fourth out of some big schools like Branson and Harrison and all that stuff. Um, so, you know, that's pretty exciting for him. Sorry, that was the FCC calling because they're wanting to know our ratings just went through the roof. So I was having to tell them, you know, <laughs> that's the fun about being live, right? Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. And you mentioned uh, Morgan Zick. Well, she's a speedster, that one is. Yeah, yeah, she's pretty fast. Um, this was our first track. She has to work quite a bit, um, but this was her first track meet this year. Um, we got a few coming up that she'll be able to go to. So she's still kind of getting warmed up in the track right now. Yeah, a lot of people don't realize, you know, a lot of the bigger schools, they'll just have a coach that just does one sport. But at a smaller school, you know, you do the senior high uh, basketball team. I believe you also do the junior high team as well. And then also track. So, I mean, you're involved mm -hmm. in multiple sports throughout the year. Yeah, and uh, in seventh grade on top of that. So, you know, there was that stretch that uh, uh, we played. Uh, the senior high played five games in a row and ended it with flipping at our place. And 
the next morning we went to Yellville and played a seventh grade jamboree at like 9 a.m. So it was, uh, yeah, that was a very, very long week. Um, but I mean, when you're winning, it's definitely worth it. <laughs> so coach, who do you uh, think of- really, yeah, who do you think really influenced you as a coach, you know, that said, hey, I want to get into coaching and do that. Who was kind of your influence? Well, I had a, I always felt like the, whenever I played, I was more of a general, I wasn't the most athletic, I wasn't the fastest, you know, I didn't, you know, we had better scores on the team whenever I played, but I felt like I was more of a leader and a general on the floor, you know, and that, you know, a little bit more of the glue guy, I guess you could say. Um, so I kind of carried that on. I always loved basketball. I never wanted to step away from it. So that's really what kind of got, kept me in it. Um, our, you know, my high school coach was a very, very good planner, very, very good at, you know, watching film and, and getting the stats and getting a defensive game plan together for him. And that was, a that was very influential for me being a defensive minded coach. Um, and I've, I've just always had a passion for trying to get on defense, uh, you know, getting after people and everything. And, trying to watch film all the time and, and getting scout reports going and all that. Um, yeah, that's about my influence base right there. Last year, Coach, uh, you guys had a very successful year. Um, you qualified for state. Uh, first time, I believe, in quite some time. Is that right? Yeah, I think it was uh, 20 years, um, 20 or so years since they've uh, gotten to state. I think it was another, I can't remember what the years were, but Hayden's the first time to be an all-state player uh, for a season in quite a while, maybe 10 years or so. Um, On top of that, I know it's been three years, three or four years, but that same group won the junior high district when they were ninth graders for the first time in school history. Um, They... uh, made it to the district finals for the first time in four or five years. Um, you know, it's they've pretty much set a trend and, and, and did a lot of great things this year. Couldn't be more proud of them. Well, maybe uh, if you could give us a, a relist some of your thoughts uh, through last season. What are your feelings, thoughts? Yeah. Um, well, I guess right before – um, right before camps, like Harding Camp is kind of our big camp we go to. It's around you know, the beginning of June. And uh, we, you know, with my personnel, wasn't for sure what kind of defense we were really going to be playing. Um, you know, mostly man is what I was thinking, but I kind of just threw in this other defense kind of thing I've never done before. It's kind of just like a matchup zone is essentially what it is and uh, kind of built on trying to get turnovers. Well, we put it in pretty much two days before we went to Harding and the kids loved it. Like they all loved it, Jeffrey and Colton and and uh, Trace up there being quick guys. Uh, they loved it because you can just run the whole time on defense, just playing as fast as you can. We took it down to Harding. We ended up winning eight out of four games against some, you know, a lot of competition down there. And I feel like we – it took us a while because it's, it's a little bit complicated, but by the end of the year, I think it was uh, really, really worked for us. Um, so, and, and they bought in. That was the great thing is the kids bought into it. They loved it. You know, we, we could run any type of defense, but the kids don't buy into it. It doesn't really matter. Um, but they really, really bought into it. We, we turned opponents over quite a bit. And even in that state finals game, that kind of, we sparked a comeback there and cut it within 12 or 10 to a defending state champion, Lee County. You know, we were able to turn them over with it. Um, you know, we, we fell a little bit short, but in that game, but I mean, that was, that, it was pretty awesome to watch them just buy into something that was uh, extremely new to them, you know, um, and, and that's that group, you know, it's that group, they, uh, they're very, you know, they wanted to win, they didn't just want to get stat lines and all that, that uh, the senior group and the juniors, of course, um, they wanted to win. And, and that's always going to be special. Well, you mentioned, you know, the senior players. And, I, you know, I know you mentioned a couple of them. In less than a month now, they're going to be graduating. They're going to be moving on. 
uh, you know, this senior class, you know, you've been with through your, your time at Cotter. Any, any thoughts or memories on this uh, graduating class of 2022? Oh, yeah, this was, uh, I mean, I grew pretty close to this group, you know. You, Talent-wise, you're not, you know, Hayden's first All-State in a long time. It's going to be extremely hard to replace him. Um, Jeffrey Haynes turned it on at the end of the year, scored almost 20 points a game last four or five games. Uh, Colton Jones couldn't keep him in front of you. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, and sadly, Martin, you know, was a little bit injured, but he was a bruiser in the middle. Uh, Zach Williams could knock it down. Um, and But the best part was, you know, we, we do a lot of weightlifting, and being in the weight room with them is about – my favorite memories because we just end up we we're talking about whatever they're all Razorback fans too so we talk a lot about you know Razorback basketball's happening at that point or the football and uh a football team who was finally successful um so it was it was really fun to to just talk with them and laugh in the weight room and everything and and that's honestly some of my biggest takeaways just being around them um kind of goofing a little bit Yeah, um, I imagine there's lots of stories you could tell <laughs> tell us, especially with that group, a lot of fun boys. Um, <clears throat> so next year, uh, your conference will be changing. Uh, what's your thoughts on that? It'll be a little, it'll be all, um, well, we're still going to be the farthest away. It's all going to be into northwest Arkansas pretty much. I don't know too much about some, you know, there's a couple more Haas Halls coming in Greenland. Um, and then Omaha School or uh, Ozark, uh, Ozark Mountain School District. So there's going to be some competition still. Um, I feel like, you know, Eureka is still going to be pretty good. It's hard not to be good when you got a 6'9 kid in the middle. So um, it'll still be pretty competitive. Um, you know, we'll, we'll just have to see. I really don't know how, how many half the teams have. I know everything about Yellville and Eureka, but I'm not real sure about the teams in Northwest Arkansas, really. But, you know, I, I feel like we're going to compete. You know, we're going to have Hudson Adams returning, a uh, big-time shooter and scorer. Trace Ewing is a guy that, you know, he doesn't fill up the stat sheet, but everybody needs a Trace Ewing on their team. Just a scrapper, and we'll, I can put him inside. I can put him outside. I can tell him to go guard somebody, and he does a lot of the dirty work. Um, Peyton McGee, who got quite a bit of minutes, started a couple times for us. Um, you know, and then Prince Apato, who's kind of like Jalen Williams, he's master of taking charges. Uh, and uh, Bryce Evans is is our other junior. He's going to be able to come in and, and knock down some shots. And then we got our sophomores coming up. You know, we don't have any juniors, uh, so we've got a little gap right there. So we'll have we'll have experience. Then we'll have some inexperience at the high school level, but. Three, you know, three sophomores that I'm pretty excited about, especially Ryan Benedict. He's uh, he lives in the gym and he's grown to about six one, I think, six two maybe. But he's every day he's jumping, trying to dunk all the time in the in the gym. So that's pretty exciting. And he after he had several twenty point games in junior high. Um, you know, we got uh, Braden Adams, who's I think is following Prince Pato's footsteps on being able to take charges and being a being a good defender and then a David Roger he's uh he's getting pretty tall if he continues to grow he'll see he'll see some minutes regardless of if he can put the ball in the basket or not uh he's around six two yeah we're really excited for you know your your team to continue to cover you guys you know you mentioned you know you're a Razorback fan and your players is a Razorback fan uh, Razorback season just ended another elite eight uh pretty exciting times for basketball uh you know you mentioned Jalen Williams I mean we all loved watching him we're I think everyone in the state is like please come back so yeah uh, we're what's all your on Razorbacks yeah we're all on pins and needles right now just waiting for Jalen to hurry up and decide to come back um I think he should come back. I think he'll get a better draft stock from next year. But, uh, you know, it, I think it was Musselman's, you know, Musselman and the coaching staff, you have to give credit to them because they lost 60% of their offense from last year's. I don't know where that number came from. I just heard it. But they, they if you lose all that type, 
productivity and you can still make it back to the same level that you were, I mean, that's, that's pretty impressive. And, and that's hard to ignore. Um, you know, I thought Stanley Amude was going to end up being the kind of the guy there to the end. It seemed like he was always in foul trouble there and never really got going in the tournament and stuff. But um, it's exciting. And then look what they're bringing in. If you can get Jalen back and, and bring in those three McDonald's All-Americans. And and if you also look on, I think it's 24-7 sports, uh, look at the transfer rating. We're number one in the transfer rating right now. So. <laughs> It's, it's kind of undeniable, and it's going to be very exciting for next year. Well, Coach, I know you've uh, taken a few minutes of your time. Appreciate it. I know that it's your day off, and appreciate you uh, calling in and uh, joining us. Well, not calling in, Zooming in. But before you go, this is something we did last year. we got to have a little bit of fun. And, Joey, I'll let you kind of – I'll let you take the lead on these uh, rapid-fire questions. Now, we don't have the controversial one. Last year, we had this big controversy over is a cheesecake, a cake, or a pie. Uh, we've kind of gone a little bit different on it because there's just too much controversy. So, uh, Joey, let's see. Let's throw these rapid fires to the rain strain. All right, Coach. So, uh, here we go. What's your favorite number and why? 11. That was my number in high school. All right. So, <laughs> We know there's probably not much that scares Coach Reigns, but there's got to be something. So what scares Coach Reigns? Oh, snakes, man. And I know that's kind of a easy cliche one, but, dude, I don't – at one time on I was driving my four-wheeler back to my house, and there was a uh, – I think it was a, some, some type of diamond back. I don't know if it was a rattler or not, but it was a huge snake. And we just got pretty much a one one-car driveway, but it – was all the way across, and I almost jumped off my four-wheeler, which would have been really stupid because you're landing on the snake. But, yeah, <laughs> it, it about sent me, and I've never had my adrenaline and, and fear factor go up so quickly before. Now, I always remember that. That reminds me of uh, me and David out uh, running the, on the track out down in Cotter. Remember that, Dave? Uh, we had a, uh, a snake crawl out in front of us, and uh, we both – I think we we were like Michael Jordan. We probably were ten foot in foot in the air. And after that, they says, uh, "Let's uh, tomorrow. I think we're going to go to the gym to run." Yeah. <laughs> no, no more out here in the woods. Fastest five k time ever. <laughs> <laughs> All right, coach. So uh, tell us uh, favorite TV show. Ooh, that's that's a pretty good one. Um, I have a lot of TV shows I watch. Um, Hmm. Well, that's a good one. I didn't think of that. Right now, I, I, I got to say, since the final season's probably coming on pretty soon, Peaky Blinders on Netflix. Um, I really like that one. Um, and I think they're having their final season come on pretty soon. So I'd have to say it's probably my favorite. I can go back and watch that one anytime, pretty much. All right. So this one's going to be an easy one for you then. Favorite food? That's actually pretty tough. Um, I'm trying to <laughs> trying to diet as much as possible and trying to <laughs> cut some of the basketball weight off a little bit. Um, but man, I'd I'd say my favorite has usually always been my favorite is probably chicken fried steak smothered in gravy, mashed potatoes on the mm -hmm. side. You just can't be white or brown. White. white or brown gravy. White. All right, my man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Dave, I think I'll let you take this last one here. Yeah, find them. We don't have the controversial one this year, but but what is your hidden talent? Maybe something that people might not know about Coach Jackson Reigns. Hidden talent. Um, well, it's not public speaking so far. <laughs> uh, man, I don't know if I really have anything that's hidden. Um, I guess I'm, you know, Well, it's definitely not my – well, I'll, I'll say my my hidden talent is uh, – you know, it's not my putt game. We'll just say that. I, don't, I guess I don't really have any hidden talents, but it's definitely not – you know, I love golf, but, you know, I, I three putt every time. 
So I'm like, oh, here, okay, we'll say this. My, my hidden talent is not breaking my clubs when I go out to golf. That's my hidden talent. Hmm. Well, Coach, uh, thank you so much for taking a few minutes. And, uh, you know, we're excited. We're going to be back next year covering you guys, and we're excited. We just want to say thank you to the people over at Cotter, the coaches, you know, all the teachers, everyone over there treat us so great when we're over there doing games. And uh, we love covering games. And we are just so excited last year to have both teams go to state and all the work you guys there. And uh, we're looking forward to seeing where the Reigns trains goes next year, Coach. Man, I appreciate it. We we definitely appreciate y'all. I don't think everybody understands that, you know, you are – y'all have other jobs. This isn't your job, you know. Y'all work all day, and then you go get your stuff. You got – a little bit of time to eat maybe, and then you're getting to the gym and you're staying till 9, 10 o'clock. You got to go home and do it all over again, especially when it's a busy part of the season. I mean, if, you know, y'all put in the work and you're doing it for mostly free, I think, unless you're getting paid on the side by somebody. I don't know. I'm not going to speculate or anything, Tay. Um, but, I mean, y'all do a fantastic job and everybody appreciates it. It's awesome. I think it keeps our wife, our, us out of the house, so our wives are happy. So there you go. That's, that's, the, that's the secret yeah. to marriage. There you broadcast go. basketball. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> we appreciate we all you close us out. The well, coach, just want to say again, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate you. We look forward to next year. We can't wait. Yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah, I'm excited too, man. Anytime y'all want to do this again, this was fun. So just let me know. All right, and we just want to say thank you to everyone tuning in. And uh, everyone, go out there and do something nice for someone. And remember, your tomorrows are never guaranteed. And we'll see you next week right here on TLSN Overtime. Rackley's got an opening. She kicks at the corner. Leninger for the win. Three-pointer. And the clock runs out. Clifford wins. Hey, Joey. Dave, what's up? This is Coach Muscle, Arkansas Razorbacks. And I know you guys are huge North Central Arkansas basketball fans. 44 to 40, right here at the Coliseum. As the fans are storming the court, you expect that when it's a rivalry game. I remember that for sure, and it was in the fifth set, and it was tight. Like, we were back and forth with flipping, um, as we always do. And it is good to way! He is going to take it to the house! Touchdown, Yelda! Because we had crowd noise again. So uh, he had to turn everything back up. So look at Alexander. Alexander hits the winning shot! And congratulations to the flipping Bobcats!